So we're going to start with a group picture really quick. As a photographer, I feel like I need to photograph everything. So I can't see you guys at all. You look, you look great. All right. <clears throat> as a photographer, I feel it's important to use my camera to tell stories of interesting neighborhoods and underreported communities. I grew up in the Mayfair section of Northeast Philadelphia and attended Temple University for my undergraduate degree in photojournalism. I knew I wanted to make a career body of work in my hometown. I believe that photography is a powerful, powerful tool. It can inform, educate, and elicit change. In the fall of 2012, I began my master's coursework in photojournalism from the University of Missouri. In May of last year, I came back home to Philadelphia to begin my work on my master's thesis. My master's thesis documented the effects of the urban gun violence crisis in Philadelphia. Nearly one person has been murdered a day in Philadelphia for the past 25 years. 80% of these stories are never told in the traditional news media. I shared my photos using Instagram, hashtagging them to share them with my community and with Philadelphia. Most of the photographs I made are in Philadelphia's 22nd Police District. It is a district in North Philadelphia that has 2% of the city's population, but 10% of the murders. One fourth of this district lives below the fe federal poverty line. So people often ask me, you're a white dude, you have a bunch of cameras, how did you get access to photograph who you're photographing? I'm very much an introverted person, but once I have my camera, I feel very comfortable interacting with other people. Photography is a wonderful way to immerse yourself in another community. I would go to crime scenes where I met people, or I'd call organizations or groups that would introduce me to my subjects. But I don't consider the people I'm photographing as my subjects. Instead, we are collaborating. I am the photographer, they're the person I'm photographing, but we're working together. I'm going to share a series of images from a photo essay. A photo essay is images that come together to tell one cohesive narrative. This is Kappus. When Kappus was 12 years old, his father died of AIDS. Six months later, his family house burned down. He was a homeless teen in high school. He was shot in the left side five times, but he survived. I wanted to make a picture that showed how big, but how kind and gentle he was. A crime scene in Southwest Philadelphia. I have an app on my phone that live streams police activity. It gives me the whereabouts of where someone has been shot, age and other information. As long as I was behind the yellow police tape, I was free to make pictures. This is the scene where 26-year-old Rashawn Barry was shot seven times in the chest. Families would hold vigils and memorials after someone was, was lost due to gun violence. Teddy bears, candles would flood the streets. Areas of North and Southwest Philadelphia still have these vigils as a remembrance of someone who passed. June 1st, a crime scene at 25th and Diamond Street. I was interested in not only photographing the event, but what was behind the event, the, the observers, the families, the residents, the police that came to observe the crime scene. I'm always looking for a moment in my photograph, emotion, a connection. This is after the, the murder of Rashawn Berry. In North Philadelphia, near Temple University, a 44-year-old man was shot twice in the leg. He survived. On average, Philadelphia averages 300 homicides per year. About three to four more people are shot. 1,200, 1,300 people are being shot in my city every year. I feel a burden to tell these stories through visuals. I consider myself a visual storyteller. Another example of Philadelphia's 22nd Police District. 
I also wanted to photograph people who were physically affected by gun violence, like Nate. Nate lost his left leg after he was shot five times. It had to be, it had to be amputated. He often called me his best friend because nobody else cared about his story like I did. These photos went, went to be published in the Washington Post, MSNBC, Al Jazeera, as well as several gallery shows. Keeping these stories alive is why I do what I do. An anti-violence block party in Southwest Philadelphia. Charles is 17 years old. He's a senior in high school. His father was killed in 2007. He wanted me to make a photograph of him at his fa father's childhood bedroom. His father owned a barber shop in the Logan section of North Philly. This past March is the first time in nearly 10 years he's ever had his hair cut at his father's barber shop. The family of Troy Smith Jr. celebrating his 24th birthday, but Troy's missing. He was shot and killed in July. He was robbed for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. People often ask me, well, how do you know who's good and how do you know who's bad? Unfortunately, this story is, time and time again, someone is being shot and killed for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is his family mourning at, the loss, at, at where he was lost, 54th and Hunter Street in Southwest Philadelphia. They had a march for peace to give out flyers and information to people in the community to see if they knew anything about who killed Troy. In the nine months since he has passed, there have been no leads in his death. Quende, a rap artist who goes by the name of Black, was shot five times in the back. He relies on his mother, his girlfriend, to bathe him, to feed him, to clothe him. Malik, who was shot and killed two months before his 20th birthday for no good reason. He was found slumped over an SUV at 11th and York Street. He had two children. As a Philadelphian, I do not think this is fair that this would happen to my city. Terry was shot several times in the chest over a drug deal that went bad. He now does community outreaches before vigils and memorials. He'll talk to the youth of the city as a way, way to change their trajectory, as a way to change the city of brotherly love. Cammy's son Larry, who's in the bottom right, was shot by three different gunmen over an argument. Larry would have been 30 this year. I became very close to the lot of people I photographed because they're letting me document their most intimate, vulnerable moments. I often call Cammy my mother, and she often tells me that sharing these stories have given her closure to losing her son. In the Frankfurt section of Philadelphia, a man was shot 15 times. A crime scene is an often a long process. At first, the police will arrive, and I'll try to get there as soon as possible to make pictures even before the police tape goes up. Then CSI and detectives. The funeral for John Barry Jr., who like Troy Smith and so many others, was killed for doing absolutely nothing wrong. He was shot and killed and robbed for his wallet. His wallet had less than $50. Families would often thank me for photographing. As I mentioned, most of these events are never covered in the news media. So most, most of the times when I'm making pictures, there's no TV stations, no reporters, no other photographers. A basketball league at 15th and 16th and York Street aims to keep, to keep kids off the street in the summer. Often violence peaks in the summer, Memorial Day, Labor Day, 4th of July, more people are out drinking, it's hotter out. 
It's not uncommon to see nine, 12 people shot a day in the summer in Philadelphia. An anti-violence march in the Frankfurt section. The family of Terrence Bird Cox mourn over the loss of their son. Terrence was 25 years old. He went down the street to grab something from the Chinese takeout for his family. He never came back. His family mourned over his loss here, asking, why does this happen to us? Why us? Over a thousand people attended his vigil. And a week later, his funeral. Various community organizations come together to create t-shirt memorials for the people that are lost. They write the name and ages of these people. They travel from churches to other community events, just out in the street for people to see. A football game in Northeast High School after one of his players passed away. A drum line along West Susquehanna Avenue near Temple University. Pre-2012, 300 to 400 people were killed in Philadelphia. However, these numbers have dropped. In the past two years, 250 people have been killed each year. This still seems like a high number. But Cure Violence and Philadelphia Ceasefire are hiring ex-offenders who have rehabbed to now go into the city to mediate this conflict. Still, Philadelphia has the highest murder rate per capita out of any city in the major, any major metropolitan city in the U.S. 14 people per 100,000 are being murdered. Chicago is second. 12 people per 100,000 are being murdered. My goal is not to show Philadelphia. My goal is to show, share stories of hope, sorrow, loss, and happiness as a way to grow as a community. Again, I believe photography is a powerful educational tool informational tool, and a way to elicit change. Thank you.